everything up on uh, live or Facebook. Um, Salam alaikum. I'm sorry, man. That could have been me because it kept booting me out and I kept trying to get back in. Oh, was it you? <laughs> yeah. You were the troublemaker, man? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> when, when, when you come in, it should give you an option to say, uh, stay as co-host. Uh, inshallah, so I just click on that. It should give you that option. If it's not, I'm not sure why, but it should. Yeah, I, I know I did something, but it's so, but I'm, you know, there should be no, there should be no more problems. <laughs> okay, alhamdulillah. At least we at least we resolved the issue then, inshallah. <laughs> so you, inshallah. I'm just sharing, inshallah, ta'ala, and we'll be getting started, inshallah, ta'ala. Okay, so bismillah, wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man tamasaka bi sunnatihi ila yawm al-deen, amma ba'd, fa inna astaqa al-hadithi kitab Allah, وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار I commence in the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful I send salutations and prayers and peace upon the finality of prophets and messengers Muhammad ibn Abdullah صلى الله عليه وسلم upon his family, his companions, and all who follow him in righteousness until the Day of Judgment. Indeed, the best speech is the Book of Allah, Jalla the Qur'an. And the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad, Salawatullahi wa salamuhu Ali. Beloved brothers and sisters, Alhamdulillah, we are continuing on with our journey and looking at women around the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Tonight we'll be taking four of the female companions, inshallah ta'ala. And then probably, we will probably finish in maybe two weeks. I think we'll be caught up and finishing in two weeks alongside our Wednesday class, inshallah ta'ala, and our Monday class. And then inshallah ta'ala, we'll be putting forth a new set of courses. We'll take a week off like always, and then we'll put a new set of courses forth, inshallah ta'ala. We have sent out um, in the sisters chat and on the men's chat as well as our facebook page um two um questionnaires or two polls one is just suggestions for what everyone may want to look at as being the next uh, set of courses that are taken in shallow talib everyone's interest in that in terms of the book club and the other two classes and then um, those who are interested in taking uh, nuraniya um, learning to read Arabic and the Quran, inshallah ta'ala, through that, mashallah, very special um, science of uh, an nuraniya inshallah ta'ala. Um, so those two, inshallah ta'ala, are two forms that I have uh, been put up. And uh, Sister Um Sumeya, inshallah ta'ala, maybe throughout the class, if you can put them up here in the chat room for everybody else, that would be great as well, just in case um, the people have not seen it elsewhere. So, yeah, so we're commencing, inshallah ta'ala, with... Um, Fatima bint al-Khattab. So Fatima, the daughter of al-Khattab, who was the sister of Umar ibn al-Khattab, right? The second caliph after the Prophet's death, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, Abu Bakr being the first. And they say that um, there's a famous statement um, on behalf of Fatima um, that she says that is narrated from the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, but I have to throw it out there. I was not able to find the source for this narration. So whether it's authentic or not, right now I have it up in the air. Okay, so we have it up in the air. But there's other things that we can take from the fawaid, inshallah ta'ala, from um, good things that other ahadith bring into this one hadith, inshallah ta'ala, that we can extract some benefit from it, inshallah ta'ala, just in case this hadith is not um, an authentic hadith or you know, a credible hadith, inshallah ta'ala. But again, we put the disclaimer out there, inshallah ta'ala, until I can find, um, you know, um, some more information regarding this hadith. So she narrates, saying that the Prophet Sallallahu narrated, My ummah shall continue to be blessed as long as the love of this world has not prevailed among them. And as long as there is no prevalence of corrupt scholars, ignorant reciters of the Qur'an or tyrants, if all that prevails among them if all of that prevails among them, I fear that Allah may include them in all of the punishment. Um, you know, one of the things that we know is that from this ummah, 
right? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did say there's always going to be a group from this Ummah who will always be calling to the good and forbidding the evil, who will always be upon Kitab and Sunnah, right? Alhamdulillah. So we know that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he tells the truth. So there are always going to be a group of this Ummah, inshallah ta'ala, who is going to be, mashallah, diligent and holding on to the truth, inshallah. And we know from the Quran that Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala, he tells us, you know, um, to stay away from falling in love with the world, inshallah ta'ala. Um, and as long as we stay away from falling in love with the world, then inshallah ta'ala will find blessings, right? And our life will be blessed, alhamdulillah. So we can extract some of those types of benefits. And then, and you know, as long as there's no prevalence of corrupt scholars, we know that there's an authentic hadith that the Prophet sallallahu said, from the people who will be questioned first on the day of judgment will be the scholar, right? The shaykh, inshallah ta'ala, regarding his knowledge, inshallah ta'ala, and, you know, why did he learn and why did he study and that the, the shaykh or the scholar will say, I did it, ya Allah, for your sake. And he says, no, you did it because you want to be known, because you wanted people to, mashallah, talk about you and brag about you, mashallah, recognize you. You wanted to be famous, right? SubhanAllah, may Allah forbid us from ever falling into any of these categories. And the Quran recited the same, that they'll be from those who will be questioned first as well, and that they'll say, Ya Allah, I recited the Quran for you. And they said, no, you recited beautifully because you wanted to be known as the Qari, as the, mashallah, as the most beautiful reciter ever, right? Showing that their intentions were corrupt, their intentions weren't sincere. Um, and they will be from among those first who will be questioned and punished if they are deserving of that, inshallah ta'ala. And we ask Allah to always make us sincere, inshallah ta'ala, to do things for His sake, never to be heard, never to be seen. And He can keep the fame, inshallah ta'ala. There is no need for it. And, you know, alhamdulillah, we know again, if they fall into those things, as in this hadith, then they will be from among those who actually fall into punishment, inshallah ta'ala. So we can kind of, you know, add and subtract that way, inshallah ta'ala, to bring forth some benefit from this narration. Um, Sa'id ibn Uzaid, a great companion and one of the ten who were promised uh, and given the glad tidings of paradise, um, is mentioned. Um, you know, that when he's mentioned, her name is also mentioned, right? Also, they say that whenever the name of Khabbab ibn al Arat, you know, Khabbab was the sixth person to accept Islam. He was number six in accepting Islam. He was tortured. Tremendously, he was one of the ones who came out very early on. Subhanallah, um, he came out very early on um, in, in in the times where they were still in secrecy, and he kind of exposed his Islam and said, "You know, I'm a Muslim, right?" Subhanallah, and because of that, he faced a lots of difficulties. Subhanallah, but they say when he's mentioned, she's also mentioned. Subhanallah, biladi. Also, that each time Surah Al Taha is recited. That, mashallah, the story of Fatima bint al-Khattab comes to play as well, alhamdulillah. Showing some of, mashallah, her blessings and her fada'il, alhamdulillah. Um, and it says that, subhanAllah, it takes us right away to the story of Umar ibn al-Khattab, radiallahu anh, to, mashallah, her story is intermixed with her brother. And they say that, you know, Umar ibn al-Khattab, radiallahu anhu, you know, um, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to make dua. He used to say, Oh Allah, strengthen Islam with one of, with the one who is dearer to you of the two Omars, right? Of the two, Al-Umarain, right? Of the two Omars, inshallah ta'ala. Umar ibn Khattab and Amr ibn Hisham, right? So these were both two people who were against the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in those times. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, because he understood their strength, he understood, Allah, their influence in the community, right? He understood that with these two individuals, or one of these individuals, that this would bring, mashallah, some izzah, mashallah, to Islam. They would have a backbone that is strong, inshallah ta'ala. So he used to supplicate, yeah, Allah, guide one of the two Omars, right? SubhanAllah, showing us that we as well can do the same in our day and time, making dua for Allah to guide people to Islam, inshallah ta'ala, who we feel are going to be a benefit, right? And they, when they move forward, they say that, you know, um, before going into the story, they say that Fatima, you know, she was a woman of pure heart. She was, uh, mashallah, free of filth um, and deviations, especially during that age of ignorance where we used to see where that filth and that, you know, mashallah, deviation existed. That, alhamdulillah, her purity met with Sa'id, 
um, and the, the two noble elements were joined together, meaning she ended up marrying Saeed, right? And that in that home came forth, mashallah, a beautiful Islamic home that, mashallah, has seeds of faith um, that it turned into beautiful fruits later on. And they say that, uh, and moving forth with her story, that Umar ibn Khattab, radiallahu anhu, he was in the company of some of the Qurayshi chiefs. And they were chatting, supposedly, in the courtyard uh, by the Kaaba. And they were troubled by the spread of the Prophet, sallallahu call. The deen was spreading. People were accepting Islam. They're frustrated. They're trying to figure out, how do we stop this, right? SubhanAllah. And, you know, um, Umar ibn Khattab, he became extremely upset in that gathering. And they say that he stood up from the gathering and that he decided, I'm going to kill Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa today. And that he said he began to walk to the Prophet sallallahu house and he had his sword on, you know, and that one of the men from Bani Makhzum saw Omar radiallahu anhu walking and he saw the rage that existed in that was present in Omar's face and he asked him where are you going and Omar radiallahu anhu he says I'm going to kill Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and you know the man he told him do you think that the clan of Abdul Manaf is going to leave you alone if you kill him he says rather why don't you put your own house in order ya Omar Subhanallah, right? So here he's telling Omar, put your own house in order, meaning your family member, your sister has accepted Islam. She's become a Muslim, right? And this threw Omar off, right? Because he was like, huh? You know, you, my, who? My sister accepted Islam? You know what I mean? What are you talking about, right? And the man said, yeah, your sister Fatima and your brother-in-law Sa'id ibn Zayd, they have followed Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Some may say, Subhanallah, Omar, uh, you know, the man threw his sister, you know, Omar's sister and Saeed under the bus. But the reality, this was protecting the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because Omar's intent was to go out and harm the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he distracted him, right? And Omar Radiallahu Anhu, he changed course. He begins to walk to his sister's house in rage, you know, upset. They said he was like a, a, a furious bull, subhanAllah. And they say that, you know, subhanAllah, that during this time, Islam was still being taught in secrecy, okay? So it was only a few companions who actually had pronounced their Islam openly. Abu Bakr was one of them. Ali was another. Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas, Zubair ibn Al-Awam, etc., right? So these were four that had openly expressed their Islam, but for the most part, the Muslims were hidden this was those three years of secrecy right in the beginning where subhanAllah the Muslims were still hidden and they were still trying to learn the deen and what the Prophet SallAllahu Alaihi would do was that he would pair individuals together. Big brother, big sister type of thing inshallah ta'ala. He would receive the revelation, he would teach a companion, then that companion would go to the house of another companion and he would teach them or they would come over to Darul Arqam inshallah ta'ala, right the house of Al Arqam ibn Abi Arqam and they would learn there in that institution, mashallah, in that university that was known as the University of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they say that, subhanAllah, you know, this was so that the da'wah wouldn't be impeded, right? The progress of the da'wah, the growth of the Muslims, you know, can continue. Um, and, and, and here we find a very important point of, um, you know, for new Muslims, um, oftentimes, you know, we find that with new Muslims, the family dynamics becomes very tough. <laughs> it becomes challenging. Why? Because now you've accepted this faith, inshallah ta'ala, and you've entered this home, and all of a sudden, it's a different person, right? This man who used to be my son, my daughter, right? All of a sudden, they come in, they're dressed differently, they look differently, they're talking differently, right? Subhanahu Rabbil Alim, who is this? And we have to realize as, mashallah, putting the shoe on the other foot, that this is a shock, right? It's a shock for our families that, you know, subhanAllah, you know, we come home one day, we were in the party, some of us was out partying and drinking, others, you know, were just living different types of lives. And all of a sudden now you come and you have a sense of righteousness and you're praying five times a day and you're growing your beard and you're covered up and some brothers put on the thobe and, 
you know, for them, it's like, what's going on? I know my family, they were like, you became an Arab? What happened? <laughs> right? When they start wearing the thobe, you became an Arab? What happened? Like, you know, where, where, where have you been? Who have you been talking to, right? They were, they were, you know, genuinely confused and not only confused, concerned, right? And rightly so, right? Because people go through so many different things in the world and so many different changes that they were concerned for their son, for their grandson, their cousin, whatever it may be, whatever position you played with them, right? Um, so during this time, they kept that secrecy so that they can build their iman, they can build their faith, they can concentrate on themselves, they can learn deen, inshallah ta'ala. And then afterwards, it would be easier to, mashallah, convey that to their families. Others would convey it to their families in secrecy, right? Um, hoping that, you know, their families would understand and their families would embrace and shout out. And then sometimes that kind of blew up in their face and turned out to be um, a negative for them. And they ended up being tortured or oppressed by their own family, right? But from all of this, we learned that as a new Muslim, that when you come through the door, you know, you don't necessarily have to open up right away to your family and tell them, look what I've become, right? You can take time, inshallah ta'ala, and it may be from wisdom to take some time, inshallah ta'ala, get yourself together. Why? Because in many instances, our families begin to question us as to why we've made changes. And in many instances, we don't have all of the answers, right? So we seem more confused than certain, right? SubhanAllah, we seem more confused than certain in, in many cases. But if we give ourselves time to learn a little bit, inshallah ta'ala, get some foundational principles in, inshallah ta'ala, when we are questioned, then inshallah ta'ala, you know, we can be able to answer the question. I can tell you, I confused the heck out of my family. I was studying Islam. I was studying righteous teachings. I was studying the nation of Islam. I was reading the Bible. I was, you know what I mean? I was reading some, I was reading some crazy book from niggas to gods. I was reading some crazy stuff and, and, and I was mixing it all up together and coming and hitting my family with all of it at the same time because I didn't know no better, right? SubhanAllah. Um, and it just messes up the da'wah completely, subhanAllah rabbil alim. And it just pushes your da'wah back years, and then you gotta fix all of that, right? So here we see that the Prophet Sallam, he safeguarded that. He safeguarded that so that they can focus on themselves, on their relationship with Allah, solidify that first, and then be able to convey that to everybody else. And I know you want your mother, you want your father, you want your family to be Muslim, right? That's 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 what we want, right? SubhanAllah, and we yearn for that. But sometimes we do the opposite. Uh, and you know the effect ends up being the opposite that we push away rather than bringing them close and shall tell them because we just don't have the wisdom yet so this was the case um during that time that they mashallah were in secret inshallah ta'ala and that khabab ibn al-arat he was the one designated to teach um fatima and Said. okay radiallahu anhuma may allah be pleased with both of them and when Omar radiallahu anhu, he arrives at the door, he can hear that they were saying something. He didn't know what they were saying. It was, it was like murmurs, right? He couldn't hear if it was, he didn't know what it was saying. And he's banging on the door, banging on the door. So Khabab, they notice his Omar Khabab, he goes and he hides, right? And then Saeed and, uh, uh, you know, his sister opened the door. Somebody asked, well, why did Khabab hide? Why? Because again, he was a key person in educating the new Muslims, inshallah ta'ala, so the last thing we wanted, for what they wanted was for something to happen to him, radiallahu anhu, and then, you know, now you lose a source of goodness who is coming in and teaching the people, inshallah ta'ala. And Omar radiallahu anhu, he says, you know, what was going on here? I heard something. You know, what were you guys doing? You know, subhanahu rabbil azim. And they say that, you know, Fatima, she drew up the courage to confront her brother, and she says, you know, without any fear, you know, I've accepted Islam. Me and my husband have accepted Islam and we've testified that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, subhanAllah. And Omar radiallahu anhu, he flipped out. <laughs> now you imagine Omar, they say that, you know, he was so big, they said he was able, his feet would touch the floor when he stood on the horse, right? This, this is how big they say he was, right? And he was known to be a wrestler. He grabs her brother, he throws him on the floor, he begins to pounce on him. Right, he begins to beat on him. Subhanallah. Fatima radiallahu anha, she goes to try to stop her brother. He turns around and <laughs> he smacks her. Allahu Akbar. Right, and he smacks her so hard that they said that blood began to trickle down her face. Subhanallah. And when he saw the blood on his sister's face, 
his heart was immediately affected, right? Because he was in the he was in in that state of madness, right? At that moment, anger, right? Is this the sister to insanity? And he kind of backed up, and he let her husband stand up, inshallah ta'ala, and he asked her, you know, what was it that you were reading? And they said it was the Quran, Surah Al Taha, right? And he says, you know, give it to me. I want to read it. And she says, you know, only the pure can touch this. You know what I mean? You're not pure. You know, you can't be touching the Quran like this. Uh, and, you know, and they say that he washed up and then she gave him whatever, you know, they were reading from, you know, back then they would write things on bones and cow leather and these different types of things. So whatever the source was that they had written it on, she hands this to him and he reads Surah Al Taha and he reads those initial verses of Surah Al Taha and his heart is completely touched, subhanAllah. And he says, where is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? You know, and out of concern, they're like, you know, why does he want to go to Muhammad? And he wanted to go to Muhammad to take his shahada, inshallah ta'ala. And subhanAllah, he gets up and he goes to the house of Al-Arqam, Darul Al-Arqam, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was. And he knocks on the door and the companions look through and they say, yes, Omar, yeah, we must know Allah, you know, should we open the door? You know what I mean? You know, because everybody knew Omar, right? SubhanAllah, and Hamza was there. And Hamza was like, you know, let him in, inshallah ta'ala. You know, he, they, 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 he's either going to probably say either going to take shahada or inshallah ta'ala will deal with him. No problem. You know what I mean? There's more than enough of us in here, inshallah ta'ala. And he comes in and in one narration here, it says that, you know, subhanAllah, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he grabs him and he says, yeah, Omar, isn't it time, you know what I mean, for you to, mashallah, you know, you know, submit and that Umar radiallahu anhu, he inshallah ta'ala, he accepts Islam at that point and he takes the testimony of faith, faith, alhamdulillah, um, and he says, ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna muhammad rasulullah, alhamdulillah, and he becomes Muslim. And they say that, you know, as soon as the acceptance of Omar came in, that the call of Islam came out, came out of secrecy and into public, subhanallah, right? Showing that Allah answered the dua of the Prophet وسلم, by guiding one of the two Omars, Alhamdulillah, and Umar ibn Khattab, mashallah, with that they had even more strength with him and Hamza, the uncle of the, 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 the uncle of the Prophet, وسلم, that um <clears throat> you know they were able to mashallah, you know, now feel that strength, alhamdulillah, and be able to be more bold in their stance with Islam, alhamdulillah, and this is why he was giving the name Al Faruq, Al Faruq, Alhamdulillah, titling him the one who distinguishes between right and wrong, truth and falsehood, inshallah ta'ala. And they also have the nickname of Abu Hafs, Abu Hafs, right? Alhamdulillah. So this is the basic story of Fatima radiallahu anha that's connected to the conversion of her brother Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anha. And we see that, mashallah, you know, they were adamant in learning the deen and memorizing the Quran, alhamdulillah. And this is how her brother found her, inshallah ta'ala. And alhamdulillah, we see how the Quran impacts the hearts, right? Sometimes, um, unfortunately, nowadays we believe um, that we need so much to prove Islam to be correct. You know, I need some scientific proof. I need some data. I need to, you know, mashallah, be able to wipe the floor with the atheists. You know, subhanAllah, back in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa you know what I mean, um, you know, Musa ibn Umayyad, they would come through and they would say, you know, what is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying? You know what I mean? You know, and they, and they wanted to know so that they can go ahead and try to destroy the Quran. And he would say, and they would say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Al Rahman Al Rahim, Maliki Yawmiddin. They would start to recite Surah Al Fatiha. And Surah Al Fatiha would enter the heart. And subhanahu wa rabbil it will affect that heart and people will take shahada. You know, we see Omar reading Surah Al-Taha in the Quran. It just, subhanahu wa rabbil azim, it hits him right in the core of his soul. Allahu Akbar, right? And this is the power of the Quran, right? We must always return back to that power of the Quran. The Quran, mashallah, is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the words of the creator of the heavens and earth and there's nothing more powerful than that this is why they used to say you know cover your ears when you get around the believers right because that stuff that they recite is like magic it gets into your ears then it goes into your heart and it gets into your soul and it and it just destroys your disbelief and makes you a believer alhamdulillah right 
And we always have to, mashallah, go back to that source. That is the source of guidance. It is the nur of Allah, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the light. It is the huda. It is the guidance, mashallah. It is the rahmah. It is the shifa. It is all of that. The mercy, the healing, right? Subhanahu rabbil azim. Instead of all of this other stuff, alhamdulillah, some of that stuff, okay, you can use it to kind of, you know, combat and debate, inshallah ta'ala. But there's nothing more powerful than the book of Allah, tabaraka wa ta'ala. We move on. Ummani, ummaniyah. Ismat bint Amr, they say that um, she was the second woman among the Ansari delegates who came from Al Yathrib to Mecca to make the Pledge of Allegiance um, of, of Al Aqaba with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they say that in Medina she used to listen to Mus'ab ibn Humayr. Mus'ab ibn Humayr, he was the Dawah king. MashaAllah. He's the one that came into Medina and Alhamdulillah with his Dawah with his Qur'an, with mashallah, with his invitation, his character, all of that stuff, people were accepting Islam left and right. Allahu Akbar. All of that, all of those good deeds go onto his scale, subhanAllah. Right? And she used to narrate from him. She says that, um, subhanAllah, um, she was someone who was, mashallah, emotionally prepared to receive knowledge for her, for, 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 of her religion. Um, and she remained far away from ignorance and idolatry. And they say that when the journey um, was announced that they were going to go to Me Mecca, inshallah ta'ala, to go ahead and take this Pledge of Allegiance with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that she immediately prepared to join the ranks. And that she was one of the two Ansar women who were there to, mashallah ta'ala, um, take that Pledge of Allegiance. And there's a, 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 there's a statement by Ibn Hajar where he says that... Um, Ummani was the mother of Shub Shuba says some say her name was Asma ibn Amr ibn Sa'ad reports on the authority of Al Muqidi, who also narrated with his chain of transmission reaching Um Ammara that she said the men were shaking hands with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi on the night of the pledge of Al Aqaba. While Abbas, the Prophet's uncle, was holding the other hand of the Prophet. Sallallahu so when they would take the pledge, they would shake the hand of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi and take the pledge of allegiance, right? Take the shahada. And then he says, my husband, Arabah ibn Amr said, O Messenger of Allah, these two women who came with us to swear, these two women came with us to swear allegiance to you. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, I accept their pledge with the same terms that I accepted yours. The only difference is that I don't shake the hands of women. Okay. So we see that here. We're learning here that subhanAllah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he did not shake hands with the women and he did not take their pledge of allegiance in that manner, inshallah ta'ala. <coughs> and they say that, alhamdulillah, alongside with her, when she took that pledge, was the honorable companion, Mu'adh ibn Jabal, alhamdulillah. So we see that she is the mother of Mu'adh ibn Jabal, and Mu'adh ibn Jabal, he was a giant from among the companions, alhamdulillah. Um, they said that she also, mashallah, participated in alongside the battles, um, alhamdulillah, as well. You know, she was giving aid, treating the wounded, providing drinking water to the troops, preparing food, etc., etc., inshallah ta'ala. And that Ibn Hajar said about Mu'adh ibn Jabal that he was the leader and the authority in the knowledge of the lawful and the law and the unlawful, in the knowledge of the haram and the halal, right? That anytime you wanted to know about haram and halal, you will go to Mu'adh ibn Jabal. And we know that Mu'adh ibn Jabal as well, he is the one that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam sent to Yemen. He says, you're going to come to a people from the people of the book, inshallah ta'ala. Let the first thing that you do is invite them to La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And if they accept, then teach them the salah. And if they accept, then teach them, mashallah, you know, the, to, about fasting. And then teach them about, you know, Ramadan. And teach them about hajj, etc., etc., inshallah ta'ala, right? And you have that beautiful hadith, mashallah, where we learn, alhamdulillah, the essence of, mashallah, teaching people first the importance of La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, and then moving down the scale, inshallah ta'ala, instead of just dumping everything on everybody in one shot. Right? We learn the hikmah and the wisdom of Mu'ad ibn Jabal given to him by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mu'ad ibn Jabal also, as it was narrated from Allah's Messenger, that he said... Um, if you want to learn Quran, then learn it from four, right? SubhanAllah. And that he was counted as one of those four 
Um, he says, uh, you know, the Mu'ad ibn Jabal is counted as one of those four that you will go to learn Quran from. Um, so one of the things that we see here, you know, um, that her uh, blessings, right, her fadail, was that she was one of the few, she was one of the two women anyway, that actually took the trip from Medina all the way to Mecca to, mashallah, pledge her allegiance to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Mashallah, to give that commitment of, I'm a Muslim, inshallah, and we're going to go back to al Medina and basically continue to spread this deen and prepare al Medina, inshallah, ta'ala, so that, inshallah, ta'ala, you can migrate and come to al Medina, ya Rasulullah, right? Subhanallah. So we see that, mashallah, and then at the same time, we see that, you know, that institution of deen was found in her household, right? We talked about how important the role of the mother is, and mashallah, the one who is the educator in the home, inshallah ta'ala. And alhamdulillah, we see that outcome within her children. Mu'adh ibn Jabal, radiyallahu anhu, that mashallah, who mashallah was a giant from among the companions, radiyallahu anhu. And may Allah be pleased with her mother, inshallah, with his mother, inshallah ta'ala, and accept all the good from her and from him. So we, mashallah, also get that inspiration. Uh, our sisters get that inspiration to want to raise children the same way that mashallah umanim raised them mashallah. The next woman is Al Khansa, Tamadur bint Amr ibn Sharid, and it is said that <coughs> the Prophet Sallallahu would say, "Hey, or O oh, Khanas, right? O oh, Khanas, right? He would shorten her name, inshallah, just like he would say Aish with Aisha radiyallahu anha, inshallah ta'ala, and that she was someone who used to write poems, Allahu Akbar. And he would encourage her to write poems, right? Which also shows us that writing poems in Islam is completely halal, right? As long as those poems do, don't contain, you know, things that are illicit and, you know what I mean, are, are against the Quran and Sunnah, you know, foul speech, you know what I mean, and talking about things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not be pleased with. But that po poetry is halal, inshallah ta'ala. And the author says here, the Messenger of Allah did not compose poetry, but as an Arab, he naturally loved refined and truthful poetry, the sort that avoided exaggeration and tri uh, triviality in words and meanings. And he says that, you know, also one of those distinguished poets during that time was Hassan ibn Thabit, who devoted his poetry to the defense of Islam, right? And the Prophet Sallallahu and in support of the truth. And he was so popular in this regard that he was honored with the highest and noble title as of the messenger's poet. Right. So he would be the one that would go and mashallah battle against the other poets defending Islam, defending the Quran, and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Khansa belonged to the tribe of Banu Sulaym. They said she was beautiful, mashallah, well-mannered, eloquent. She, they said that she started reciting poems very early in her life and that her poems used to be very short. Right, She didn't write anything too long. And then when her brother passed away, uh, the, her brother Sakhar, that when he passed away, she began to write long, longer poems that she wrote, a beautiful poem that she's known for, that she wrote for her brother um, due to the sadness that she was feeling and stuff like that. Um, Alhamdulillah. And they say that Al Khansa, she came to Al Medina as part of a delegation from Banu Sulaim. She embraced Islam, became a good Muslim, she pledged her allegiance, and she remained truthful to the religion and the faith. And that Al Khansa was one of the noblest women. Her nobility showed in its finest form on the day of the Battle of Qadisiya. It was also on this great day of the Islamic conquest that Al Khansa attained prominence as one of the unparalleled Muslim women. The prominence, he says, revolved around two things. Um, her admonition to her sons. She had four sons who actually fought in this battle, inshallah ta'ala. And then her statement after all four of her sons were actually martyred in the battle. They all died in the battle, subhanAllah. So she was known, mashallah, for these two things. And it was reported by Ibn Abdul Bar in one of his books that Al Khansa binti Amr witnessed the battle of Al Qadisiyah in which her four sons participated. She addressed them on the eve of the battle and she said, My sons, you embraced Islam and migrated willingly. She says, By Allah, besides whom there is no other deity worthy of being worshipped except Allah, you are all the sons of one man, as you are the sons of one woman. I have never cheated on your father, never have I brought disgrace upon your uncle, disparaged your esteem, or altered your lineage. 
You know the great and abundant reward that Allah has set aside for the Muslims who fight against the disbelievers. Know that the everlasting abode is better than this transient one. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu sbiru wa sabiru wa rabitu wa attaqullah wa attaqullah halla allakum tuflihun And this can be found in Surah Ali Imran chapter 3 verse 200 inshallah ta'ala where Allah says O oh, you who believe endure and be more patient than your enemy and guard your territory and fear Allah so that you may be from among the successful subhanAllah so here she is saying to all four of her sons <coughs> alhamdulillah you were raised in a good home alhamdulillah a home that was salim a home that mashallah was you know full of peace tranquility and goodness inshallah ta'ala full of islam alhamdulillah and allah mashallah has told you inshallah ta'ala endure and be more patient than your enemy inshallah ta'ala right and don't hold on to this life because the next life is what's better inshallah ta'ala right she didn't as a mother didn't say you know why do all four of my sons have to go right this is her only children alhamdulillah she's sending them off to battle Telling them the next life is what we're working for. This is what we want, inshallah ta'ala. You go into that battle with that in mind. Allahu Akbar, right? And then she says, uh, continue saying to them, and when you wake up tomorrow morning, sound and healthy by Allah's leave, go and fight against your enemy with sure understanding and seek Allah's help over his enemy. When you see that the war has become intense, engage yourselves in the fight gallantly and resiliently that you may attain treasures and honor in the abode of eternity, right? Don't be a coward, inshallah ta'ala. Don't turn and run, inshallah ta'ala. Fight and be there, inshallah ta'ala, and Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is going to be with you. And they said that subhanAllah, um, after this exhortation by al Khanza, she says, I or any other creature for that matter have nothing better to say. Her statement is beyond any comments as is it is comprehensive to that point. And then the narrator proceeds to say, so her sons left, having accepted her admonition and determined to implement her words. When the morning came out, they set out into the battlefield early and they all fought gallantly and courageously until they were all martyred one by one. SubhanAllah, one after another. And when the news of the martyrdom came to Al-Khanzat, <coughs> she said, all praise is due to Allah, Alhamdulillah, who honored me with the martyrdom of my children. Subhanallah, Allahu Akbar. And I hope that my Lord will allow me to join them in the abode of His mercy. Allahu Akbar. May Allah accept that dua. I mean, right? So, you know, she didn't say, you know, why me? Why? Did no, Subhanallah. She says, Allah honored me with all of my sons dying for His cause. Allahu Akbar. And I hope that I can join them, inshallah ta'ala, because we know that the martyrs will be, alhamdulillah, in the highest part of paradise, inshallah ta'ala. And He says here, um, that afterwards, Umar bin Khattab radiallahu an, that he used to give her 200 dirham annually for each son that she lost in the battle. The final, inshallah ta'ala, um, one that we're going to take tonight is Shayma. And Shayma was the foster sister of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. We know that, um, you know, the Prophet sallallahu was taken care of as a child by Banu Sa'ad, right? And we discussed this, inshallah ta'ala, um, <coughs> with, um, you know, in the very beginning of our class, inshallah ta'ala. And they say that, subhanAllah, she would say, our Lord, keep Muhammad alive for us so that we can, so that I can see him become an adolescent than a leader, right? That Shayma was able to see the blessings that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brought to her family when he was brought home with that, you know, with those Bedouin Arabs, subhanAllah, and how, mashallah, his presence began to bless their house the animals got milk, right? The goat filled up with milk. Things would happen in the home, blessings, you know what I mean? SubhanAllah, you know, the animal was the slowest one coming to, to the city and then all of a sudden going back, it was, mashallah, the fastest one, right? People couldn't believe it, right? This was all from the barakah of the Prophet sallallahu being in that household. And we know that she was a foster sister by way of, right, breast milk, right? Because whenever the breast milk is shared, then those children become foster brothers and sisters and they cannot marry one another, right? It is haram for them to marry each other, inshallah ta'ala, because they have drunken from the same milk, so they are brothers by way of this milk that they have drunk, inshallah ta'ala. 
And they said that around that time when the Prophet Sallallahu was there, that she was like about four or five years old, inshallah ta'ala, but she was old enough to observe, you know, that change in her family condition <coughs> and know that this was a blessing, inshallah ta'ala. And then they have her name written here in English, um, what her real name would be, and it's, it, you know, because I don't have the Arabic in front of me, it's just uh, difficult to pronounce it. It looks like it could be Hadhaqa, Hadhaqa, you know, it has a transliteration. But, you know, thinking about some of the ways they transliterate, uh, it seems to be that that may be the closest pronunciation of it. Um, and, you know, there's not much that is said about her, inshallah ta'ala, um, other, other than they began to quote um, the Battle of Hunayn. And they said that, you know, Shayma, at that point, she still wasn't a believer, inshallah ta'ala. And some people ask, you know, how come if these people had saw the Prophet Sallallahu blessing as a child, that when he became a messenger, why didn't they, why didn't they accept Islam? <coughs> but we, we noticed that the Arab tribes, you know, they had that asabiya, that, that tribalism that was strong, right? Um, and they didn't want to leave that tribalism. And we see it today with even our own people. But they said during the battle, they said after the battle of Shemat, that she set out with the company, that she set out with the company, uh, in company of her people, of her tribe, against the Muslims. And during that battle, she was taken captive. And that uh, she asked to seek permission to see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, hoping that, you know, basically he would remember her and, you know, be favorable with her. And he allowed her to come in even though he didn't recognize who she was, because you can imagine they, they, he didn't see her since he was a kid, right? SubhanAllah. Um, and then it says that the Messenger of Allah, she said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, I am your foster sister. And he asked, how can you prove that? And she replied, a scar where you bit me on the back while I was placing you on my hip, right? SubhanAllah. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he, mashallah, remembered her. And you know, she was basically asking the Prophet ﷺ to grant her amnesty, right? And the Messenger of Allah ﷺ, he spread out his garment, he allowed her to sit down, inshallah ta'ala, in honor of her, and he told her, you know, come here, sit down beside me. He then told her, if you like, you can stay here with me, inshallah ta'ala, and be loved and honored, and if you like, I can provide for you, give you something, and send you back to your family and your people inshallah ta'ala but she said she wanted to go back to her people inshallah ta'ala so it says that you know alhamdulillah she accepted islam and she was sent back to her people and she didn't stay with the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam um but her family um unfortunately due to the blind allegiance to their tribe and the bedouin inclinations that they never accepted islam so we see here you know the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam honoring her because of mashallah her being the foster sister inshallah ta'ala and then alhamdulillah this interaction between her and the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam seems to be also you know what drove her to mashallah accept the faith of islam um as was the case you know with many people that once they were interact with the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam you know, even if they were people who wanted to kill him, subhanAllah, and because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was kind and lenient and gentle and loving, and you know, he would tell the you know companions, feed the feed feed the, the captives, feed them when you eat, inshaAllah ta'ala, allow them to wash, allow them to clothe them when you clothe yourself, right? That subhanAllah, that because of this treatment, um, you know, that they would just be amazed, you know, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had all of the right to, you know, do away with them because they were trying to harm him and kill him. But instead, the Prophet Sallallahu would, mashallah, kill them with kindness and love and Islam. And they would oftentimes accept Islam because of that, inshallah ta'ala. So with that, mashallah, we've covered the four um, female companions that we wanted to cover for tonight, inshallah ta'ala. I'm not sure if anybody else has any reflections. You can raise your hand. I can unmic you. Um, or, inshallah ta'ala, feel free to use the, the chat. Or if you have any questions as, as well, um, you know, feel free to use the chat, inshallah ta'ala. But we would definitely love to hear any of your reflections um, when you read um, these, uh, about these four amazing women, inshallah ta'ala. And also, while we wait for that, uh, Um Sumaya, alhamdulillah, she has added the forms here, alhamdulillah. Um, and this is the form. Oh, she added the form to be added to our email list, alhamdulillah. Um, were you able to add the form uh, 
for the, the, the poll, inshallah ta'ala, for the Nuraniya class as well. If you can do that, inshallah ta'ala, that would be great. And for the, uh, the, the second form as well, for the class, inshallah ta'ala. Go ahead, Omar. You should be able to unmic yourself, inshallah. Bismillah. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Mashallah, I'm just thinking about, like, you know, uh, the, the Sahabiyat who <coughs> had made that statement about her sons. And mashallah, just thinking about, like, <clears throat> like the home, right, the household. And she took pride in, you know, the home that she was able to provide for her children. Yeah. And she took pride in, alhamdulillah, you know, the, the, the tarbiya, right? The, the upbringing that she was able to, to provide for them. And their their life choices being a reflection of that, you know, and still just encouraging them to do more. <clears throat> and it's so beautiful, like the foundation of that, that upbringing was the Quran and, and the Sunnah, which was the Prophet, وسلم, obviously being in their, in their midst. Um, you know, Allah is, is, is so beautiful to kind of see that, um, you know, to see that somebody, you know, is, is, is part of that type of success. You know, many people, they say, you know, well, I provided a home, I, I put food on the table, I did this and I did that. And, you know, she was proud so much of how, you know, she was happy of, of, about like all the choices that she made just to retain the honor for her family. Uh, and, and you know them fighting peace of and, and giving their lives alhamdulillah you know being a result of all of that hard work you know because it's not easy you know from the marriage courses we see all the choices and, and decisions that people have to make the sacrifices that people need to make etc um, and her having made so many of those sacrifices and seeing the fruits and still saying it's not over yet you know continue on you know the promise. The promise for that, and for this, is that, um, and that type of knowledge. You know, Allah, but just all around. I mean, Subhanallah, it's so beautiful. I like to see that. Um, may Allah put that barakah in our homes, and may Allah have mercy upon them. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean. Wallahi, I see, you know, I, I think about that often, man. Subhanallah, especially as a as a revert, the convert, um, the legacy aspect of it you know what i mean um not so much the legacy that you're leaving on the earth with other people but the legacy that you're leaving in your own household um with your own children and whether you know your children are going to mashallah carry on that torch later on alhamdulillah and you know be these wonderful muslims that go on to do you know beautiful and amazing things for the deen and for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um and really I, I ask allah sincerely from my heart man for all of us that for all of us that have children, that Allah uh, places that in their heart, that He places that guidance in their heart, that alhamdulillah, that they're able to see um, that beauty of Islam, you know, in our character, in our traits, you know what I mean, in our behavior. Um, and they see that, our, you know, our love for the Quran, inshallah ta'ala, you know, um, you know, honestly, uh, you know, like one of the things, you know, mashallah ta'ala, um, you know, with our Quran readings in the morning, uh, my six-year-old, he's become accustomed that at seven thirty in the morning, eight, you know, to eight in the morning, we have the Quran reading, you know, Subhanallah, and then even, you know, uh, on some days he'll be, he may wake up a little bit before. He usually wakes up around that time that we're already in the Quran reading. Sometimes he'll wake up before, and if he sees me just like kind of like sitting around, he's like, you know, Bobby, the Quran reading, the Quran class. Well, you know what are you doing, right? <laughs> and he's reminding me, and for me, Mashallah, you know, that gives me hope, that gives me inspiration. That inshallah ta'ala, you know, these kids can be better than we are or we were inshallah ta'ala. You know, we lived the life of, you know, many of us lived the life of disbelief and then Allah opened our hearts and allowed us to accept Islam. Um, and then we had children, mashallah, and our children were born Muslim. You know, the first generation for us inshallah ta'ala born Muslim. And I can only, you know, ask Allah wa ta'ala to be kind enough and merciful with, us, with merciful enough with us that, you know, those generations continue to move on, inshallah ta'ala, and continue to grow. And that, inshallah ta'ala, you know, they can become a Mu'adh ibn Jabal, they can become an Anas ibn Malik, they can become, you know what I'm saying, 
um, all of these great companions that existed inshallah ta'ala and you know alhamdulillah contributed to alhamdulillah first you know having a stable family alhamdulillah you know especially with our daughters knowing that the importance of the muslim mother in the home and the and you know that she's the edge she's the first you know educator in the home and then you know our, our, our boys inshallah ta'ala holding up holding that you know i mean mashallah that torch as well i mean you know i mean i mean i mean ya allah i mean um Anybody else? I put the one link here uh, for the 16 week Nurania class. I'm not sure. I don't know if Sister uh, Um Sumeya um, is listening still or if she's in with, uh, with us. I don't think uh, she's not here, so maybe that's why. Um, um, and then my phone died trying to put in the second one, so I couldn't put in the second one. Uh, go ahead, Brother Michael. I'm going to unmute you and then I'm going to see if I can get her to put this link in real quick. Go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to add to what um assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to my beloved brothers and sisters. Um I just wanted to add to what Victor had um was talking about about that story, how you know it, it was a very beautiful story, um very touching. Um but what I liked most about that story was um her reaction to finding out about the martyrdom of of her four children, you know, the only you know, her only four sons. And her reaction to that, you know, just saying Alhamdulillah, just giving all praise and thanks was due to Allah you know, for, for, you know, for, um, for their martyrdom. And, you know, I mean, it's, that's amazing, you know, because it's, it's, I mean, you know, these are your only four children, your only four sons that are being out, you know, that be, are, are being sent out to, um, to battle. And they all, um, you know, they all fall one by one and hurry. Just amazing. You know, that just, I mean, that gives you a lot of hope and, you know, and trust in Allah and, you know, subhanahu wa ta'ala you know, knowing that, you know, paradise is true, you know, and that's what we all strive for. But that, that simply was amazing. That was touching, you know, to know that, you know, her, her reaction, because I mean, you know, you see many people who lose their children and, and that's, that's the last thing that they say, you know, they, you know, they say, oh, you know, why me and why my children, my, you know, my kids were good and this and that, but her reaction was just, you know, beautiful, you know, that, that was, um you know, uh, amazing, you know, to see her reaction, you know. Yeah, mashallah, mashallah, tabaraka wa ta'ala, you know, mashallah, and, and those are some of the hardest moments, you know what I mean, those are some of the hardest moments, you know, you imagine you're losing a child and stuff like that, um, that's a hard moment, you know what I mean, but that really shows uh, that iman that she had, Allahu Akbar, and may Allah, you know, allow us to have that that, that great iman, you know, alhamdulillah, um, and, and that strong iman, especially during those times of difficulty, um, anybody else, inshallah ta'ala? Yeah, and also the story of Omar, you know, how, how he became Muslim. You know, it goes to show you that, um, you know, the Quran is very powerful. You know, um, he, he, he started off, you know, with his rage and with his hatred that he had for the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And, you know, he just took a total 360 upon hearing the Quran, you know, and how it touched his heart, you know, immediately, you know. And um, it just goes to show us that, you know, the Quran is something very powerful, something that we can turn to, you know, it's, it's definitely our guide, our light, you know, our strength, you know, no matter what we're going through, you know, always turn to the Quran. Um, you know, that was, uh, you know, that was also amazing to see how he went from, you know, hating the prophet so much, you know, and, and, and becoming one of his most, um, you know, one of his, you know, one of his most, you know, like his, his most powerful. Oh, companion. Yeah. Yeah, subhanAllah. SubhanAllah. And 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 that's amazing, you know, because sometimes as Muslims we uh we go a little crazy. I'm like uh <laughs> when we find people that are talking bad about Allah and the Quran and Muhammad and they're like, you know, look at these people, subhanAllah, they you know, they want to throw the Quran in the garbage or they want to burn the Quran, right? Like you had that man in Florida one year wanted to burn the Qurans and Muslims are going up the wall, right? Like, you know, subhanAllah just kinda of like chill the cartoon of the prophet week you know oh my god the, you know look at this guy enjoying cartoons of the prophet and eventually you know i mean a lot of guys that man's heart to his you know subhan right to show how amazing Allah is sometimes you know and we see that you know this was the case during the, the life of the prophet as well subhanallah that you know these enemies and these people who want to do the most harm that at times they were the ones who ended up coming and embracing the faith afterwards inshallah except for those who were meant to be doomed. Go ahead, Brother Omar. Nah, I, I wanted to like, <clears throat> subhanAllah, that's, that's what I think a lot of the times when I see like people say things and, and, and do certain things that it's like, you know, clearly a Muslim wouldn't do, you know, we would find it disrespectful. 
<clears throat> but we, if we knew these stories of how Allah guided not just Omar, so many companions, you know, who were like that, who were like Khalid ibn Walid, right? Safe Allah. No. But before that, he he. When we think about Uhud, we know he was the one who kind of like led that that onslaught on the Muslims, you know. So Khalid ibn Walid, like if people would have to, looked at him that way, and I'm sure that they looked at him as an enemy in Islam before, but look at who he turned out to be in Islamic history, oh. you know. And so, if if we if we just Subhanallah, as like, like you said, Imam, oftentimes just had that hikmah, um, you know, and, and that mindfulness in our speech, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, once somebody dies, I mean, it, it, even even to continue cursing them, it's like, you know, the grave is taking care of that person. You yeah. know what I'm saying? May Allah protect us from the grave, I mean, but, you know, <clears throat> even even in life, like, you never know who Allah might guide and, you know, how Allah might turn whatever we have in our hearts against us because, you know, we may be cursing somebody and be insincere in our own practice. You know what I'm saying? May Allah protect us from that. I mean, and, and so, you know, a lot of the times our speech and the way sometimes uh, somebody might handle and speak about an outside person, somebody else, in large part, may be a reflection of what they have, like, in their own hearts a lot of the times. And maybe even the, 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 the amount of knowledge that they have of these stories of a great companion like Omar, right? Like, <clears throat> and maybe a companion who is not as well known, but, like, Omar's story is, like, so well known. You know, that that was the way he became Muslim, you know, slapping his sister, you know, beating up his brother-in-law, you know, doing all of these things. And then ultimately, like, you know, humbling himself and, you know, being somebody who, you know, stood in front of the Kaaba when he's making um, hijrah and saying, if anybody wants to turn their, their their wives into widows or their children into orphans, come see me outside. We is the haram. We can't fight here. But, you know, not too far. And so... You look at the at the way these people's hearts change in a matter of basically an instant, you know, it's it's nothing to make dua for somebody, you know. And um, right, and just ask a lot to God people, you know what I'm saying? To ask a lot to God because we don't lose by that, you know, we don't lose by that at all. That Allah may guide somebody and and have that type and that person have that type of success story like Omar, you know, to say, Look, I used to be like this and now I'm like this. You know, subhanAllah. So, you know, may Allah, you know, make our hearts soft and, and guide us to the best of speech and the best of, of, of manners. I mean, I mean, I mean, that's a, inshallah. Uh, alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa um, Thank you for this class. Um, I want to say, like, you know, I'm trying to fill out the form that you guys um sent. Mm -hmm. And I'm just questioning. I'm like, should I put the time I started practicing or should I put that I was born Muslim? Because... You know, I, we, I, how, I'm trying to be nice here. A lot, I, the stories are so amazing be, because, I mean, I was raised, you know, Muslim by name, to be honest, me and my siblings. Um, you know, it was more of a cultural thing. I identify more with, you know, I would like to, I like to say that, you know, I feel like a weaver, you know. Um, I wish that when I was growing up that I knew this power, the, the beauty of Islam, and I think that um, the only by the mercy of Allah SWT that I'm even in this class with my sister, you know, we will raise really, um, you know, for the dunya. I'm going to be quite honest. And it wasn't until Allah's, by Allah's mercy that we were put into a situation where we had to find, we learn the religion and find our way with Allah. Um and so we, I just wanted to let you, like, like let people know that a, um, a lot of us that are all born Muslim are honestly, like, we weren't, if you want to say. Like, we were, a lot of us, you know, a lot of our caregivers were into culture and the American dream. I'm really sorry to say that. And so I, we find these classes and I just think, I just, I'm just like, you know, subhanAllah, I wish I was, like, I, I don't want to say, I don't want to keep saying I wish, but it, I feel like a lot of the things that I was into, I, I could have had, a, I didn't have to get into it if I knew how, you know, how Allah is protecting me from all the things that I was doing, you know? So I just find myself like, you know, yeah, I just want to say that. <laughs> No, mashallah, jazakallah khair for, you know, sharing that, you know, and, and, and honestly, it's one of the reasons why, 
we actually, you know, one of the reasons that I wasn't part of the decision making back then when, when they when they were naming um, the department, but one of the reasons that they called it Reaver to reconnect in Shalotada was because not only um, are people reverting to the faith in terms of accepting the faith for the first time, but a lot of people like yourself, uh, Sister Amina, that, um, you know, they end up, you know, whatever the journey was before Islam, they were born, but they really probably didn't practice. And then all of a sudden it comes to a point in their life where Allah, mashallah, opens their hearts up like he did with you, mashallah, and they, mashallah, revert and they come back, right, and reconnect with the deen, alhamdulillah. And this space, alhamdulillah, is for people like, you know I mean, like like you and like us, inshallah, that alhamdulillah, you know, we can understand each other a little bit better, those difficulties and those struggles, inshallah, ta'ala. And alhamdulillah, you know, um, I'm, I'm happy that, inshallah, you, you found the space, inshallah, ta'ala, and that you're here with us, alhamdulillah. Um, and inshallah, you know, I hope that, you know, this continues to grow, inshallah, ta'ala, and that you guys, inshallah, ta'ala, can continue to, inshallah, be beacons of light for others, um, just like yourselves, who needed someone like you, inshallah, ta'ala, in their lives, inshallah, ta'ala, may Allah continue to use you all. I mean, I mean. I mean, and Jazakallah Khair for really for sharing that with us, inshallah ta'ala. Um, so, and then Sister Sandra, she says, it, is de it definitely gives us hope to continue making dua for our loved ones. Allah is the only changer of hearts, subhanAllah. No, that's the truth, subhanAllah. And Brother Omar, he says, Jazakallah Khair for sharing, and may Allah always make us better and be pleased with all of us. I mean, I mean. Um, so with that, brothers and sisters, alhamdulillah, I'm already about 10 minutes late. I was supposed to be performing a wedding. I was supposed to perform a wedding at 9 o'clock, but I told them I may be late anyway because alhamdulillah, the class took precedence. Um, again, just a reminder for those of who may be brand new with us, inshallah ta'ala, you know, um, we have class Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, inshallah ta'ala. Um, at the same time, at 8 o'clock, Mondays is Motivational Mondays. Going to Riyadh al Salihin. Tuesdays, we have the New Muslim Guide being brothers only and a sisters only class um, for sisters you can reach out to us at reverts reconnect uh, massnewyork.org inshallah ta'ala and alhamdulillah ask for the link for that the brothers use the same link um, Wednesdays we are finishing up our marriage course we have one more class on that and then we're going to be meeting with uh, sister Susie Dr. Susie Ismail who's actually the, the writer the author of When Muslim Marriage Fails alhamdulillah so she'll be coming on on the 24th um, doing the last session of that part of the course for us, um, you know, talking to us a little bit about why she did the research, the importance of the research, um, and kind of where do we go from here, inshallah, ta'ala, mashallah, she has some amazing work that she's done, alhamdulillah, she's a great speaker, alhamdulillah, it's, a, it's an honor for me to be able to have her on here with us, inshallah, ta'ala, and to, you know, kind of close out that session for us, inshallah, ta'ala, and then Thursdays, we have the book club, and the book club, naturally, we'll have two more sessions, uh, inshallah, ta'ala, as well, um, with the book club, and then we'll be closing out um, these sessions, inshallah ta'ala, and then restarting a whole new series of lectures, inshallah ta'ala, and classes. And again, the links are here um, in the chat for you to, you know, one is for your suggestions in terms of what would you like to see next or, you know, be involved in next, alhamdulillah. Um, we're taking everything you give us into consideration, inshallah ta'ala. Um, and then the second is uh, the Nuraniya program, inshallah ta'ala. And then the third is the link that uh, Um Sumay and my wife put up regarding um, sharing your information with us, inshallah ta'ala, so that we can keep you in the loop with everything that is happening. And then next week on the 20th, on Saturday, we have the second part of our keeping marriage full, right? Keeping our marriages full in person. It will be at NYC, the Muslim Mass Youth Center in Brooklyn, inshallah ta'ala. Um, alhamdulillah, from 6 to about 8.39, dinner will be served as well there. Um, alhamdulillah, and please, you know, um, if you haven't gotten a link or an invitation for that, reach out to us so that we can share that with you as well. And alhamdulillah, you can come and join us. The presentations for the first one was amazing. We have two sisters coming in, alhamdulillah, um, talking to us about and a very important topic as well. And then we have a third session, inshallah ta'ala, that would be in the month of December, inshallah ta'ala. So with that, Jazakallah khayr, brothers and sisters. Uh, may Allah bless you all. Um, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always have mercy on you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. For my brothers that are going to be the witnesses in the marriage for us, you know, let's switch over to that Zoom link, inshallah ta'ala, for that as well. Jazakallah khayr. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.